Good afternoon, family. Um, I'm going to get on here just to do one more testimony, a very powerful one, uh, regarding a sister in Christ that I met with. Uh, when we got on the call, she was extremely distraught. She said, you know, um, she had an argument with her daughter, and she said that she was pulled completely out of character. I say that to say this. Sometimes we think that another person has the capability to pull us out of character because of their actions, because of their attitude, because of their uh, demeanor. However, uh, however we respond and react is not being pulled out of character. It's God trying to show us something that's already there it's in our heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks our actions our responses our replies are a result of things that need to be purged out of us so i told her that in the very beginning of the conversation because as i was talking to her you know she's telling me that her daughter has a really bad temper and that she punches the wall um, and that she can get very um, combative. She can be very combative, verbally combative. But this time she was physically violent towards her mom. So as I'm hearing her talk about this, um, I heard the word opposition. And the Lord told me that it was generational. So it was a, a generational curse of opposition on the bloodline, right? So she's telling me that her daughter became physically violent towards her. She actually jumped on her mother and she said, Angela, you know, before I knew it, I just flew into a rage. She pulled me completely out of character. Um, you know, as she's talking to me, I can clearly see on camera that she's got bruises around her eyes and, you know, scratches on her face and stuff from this, this altercation. So this is never a point that we want things to get to, right? But there are certain things in our generational bloodline that make us fly into a rage like that. So before we're so quick to call somebody a non-Christian or say, well, you can't be a Christian because of how you just acted. No, they can very much be a Christian, okay? When the Bible says you will know them by their fruit, it's talking about the fruit in their life. Are they changing? Are they being transformed? Are they going from glory to glory? Are they distraught about their wretched condition? Are they bothered by the sin within? It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Jesus is perfect. We are far from it. And many of us need deliverance from what? From a violent past. Many of us need deliverance from trauma. Many of us need deliverance from abuse. Many of us need deliverance from the shame of our youth. Many of us need deliverance from emotional wounds that cut deep. Many of us need deliverance from bullying and racism growing up. Okay, so this isn't a, you know, a, a one-size-fits-all ministry. It's not a one-size-fits-all gospel. We don't just dip in a pool and we are forever changed in a moment. No. Okay, when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of us, Jesus said, I... You know, abide in me and I will abide in you. When the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, abide in us, make a home in us. He is there not only to convict us of sin because we weren't convicted of sin until we received the Holy Spirit. It never bothered us before. It wasn't a concern before. It didn't make us feel uneasy, uncomfortable and not at rest before oh but it does now hallelujah hallelujah he makes us a brand new creation but he doesn't do it overnight 
Yes, Jesus became a curse to free us from the curse. But that doesn't mean that every generational curse breaks off of you the minute that you become a child of God. No, what that does may mean is that generational curses can be broken off of your bloodline in Jesus' mighty name. But you won't even know what those curses are or where they came from. And the Lord wants you to be a part of that. He wants you to know things about yourself great and mighty things that you know not so you can understand yourself better because he knows you better than you know yourself so when we say things like that person brought me out of character no that person just pressed a button in you that the lord allowed them to press hallelujah to show you what was dwelling in your own heart and we have to thank him for that the bible is like a mirror jesus is the word made flesh the Bible is like a mirror reflecting back to us, us. So this altercation got violent. She ends up punching her daughter. She's distraught. She's very upset. I don't ever want to do that again. But the Lord was revealing. She was reacting out of a place of trauma. And so she started to talk about her, her, her past experiences with domestic violence which can cause lasting damage on a person's mind, will, and emotions, especially if you were in a domestically violent situation for the long term. That's not something that just goes away overnight. Maybe that's what our churches are preaching today, but it's not the truth. You're not transformed in a moment. You're not transformed in the blink of an eye. You're transformed by the renew renewing of your mind and renewing your mind is a process and your mind is renewed every single time a mental demonic stronghold breaks. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as I'm sitting there and as she's talking, the Lord is literally telling me a stronghold of rage is there and what's under it. So I'm just going to read this to you. There was a spirit of rage and a generational curse of rage. A spirit of animosity and a generational curse of animosity on her whole bloodline. A spirit of wrath and a generational curse of wrath. A spirit of vengeance. A spirit of retaliation and a generational curse on the bloodline of retaliation. Violence. Hatred. A spirit and a generational curse. Abuse. A spirit and a generational curse. Slander, a spirit and a generational curse, a spirit of criticism, anger, volatility, aggravation, agitation, a spirit of rejection and a generational curse of rejection, a spirit of resentment, a spirit of abandonment and a generational curse of abandonment, a spirit of contempt, pettiness, abrasiveness, betrayal, a spirit of pain that actually causes emotional and physical pain. A spirit of being overwhelmed. It was a word curse because she was always speaking it over, our, over herself. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. If you are saying all the time that you are overwhelmed, don't be surprised when a spirit that causes you to feel overwhelmed all the time attaches to you. This is why we need deliverance. A spirit of eruption, which is why she erupted like, like a volcano. A spirit of explosiveness. A spirit of prevention and withholding. After this altercation, she actually didn't want to go anywhere near her daughter. She was avoiding her. So a spirit that's preventing her from going and saying, I'm sorry, whether she feels like she had a part in it or not. A spirit of withholding, withholding her, keeping her back. A spirit of threats, threatening, sadness, disgust. A spirit of disgust came upon her for reacting that way. Avoidance. She was going to avoid her daughter. You know, because pride comes in. You hurt me. So I'm not going to talk to you until you apologize first. That's pride. That's avoidance. That's passive aggression. Passive aggression. No, actually, passive aggression is when you see them. And it's like high and by, but you're seething underneath. 
We don't want any part of that. So there was a spirit of avoidance that was at work to try to keep her away from her daughter. How many of us know when people are in acting out in these ways, it's because they're in pain. The last thing they need is to be abandoned by their parents. The last thing they need is to be abandoned by their children. A spirit of impatience, a spirit of vindictiveness, and a spirit of offense which was also a generational curse. An offense, as subtle as it may be, is the open door to bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Bitterness, once it gets into your heart, hardens your heart, and bitterness later becomes apathy. So we have to deal with offense at the onset of offense. When you know somebody has said something or done something that has hurt you harmed you, offended you, pray for that individual right away before that offense has a chance to stick. Pray for them. Say, Lord, I reject this offense. I don't want it in my heart. I'm sorry for feeling that way. Take this from me. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but we have to confess them. So the spirit of rage, she could feel it in her throat. She could feel it in her heart. The spirit of rage was affecting her speech, her words, her actions, her behavior, and her conduct. The spirit of contempt was affecting her heart, mind, attitude, mentality, reasoning, thoughts, actions, and behavior. The spirits of betrayal and pain we're affecting her heart, mind, thoughts, attitude, mentality, conduct, behavior, reasoning, ideas, impulses, inclinations. The spirit of pain was a big one. The Lord told me that, influencing many different areas. The spirit of pain was in her mind, her heart, her will, her emotions. Affecting her relationships, her communication, her conduct, her behavior, her speech, her words. We speak from a place of pain and we end up causing pain. How many of us know that, right? Our words are supposed to be gracious and seasoned with salt. However, the Lord needs to clear certain stuff out of our heart or it's going to pour out into our speech. The spirit of pain was affecting her mentality, her nervous system, her kidneys, her stomach, her liver, her spine, her gallbladder, her pancreas, her legs, her arms, her shoulders, her feelings, her emotions, and her back. She would feel movement. She would feel tightness. She would feel discomfort as these spirits began to manifest in different places. For those of you that don't believe in deliverance, she was vomiting. She was vomiting and spitting up. As these spirits were leaving. A spirit of offense. A spirit of offense was causing offensive words and offensive speech. Affecting her attitude, her demeanor, her body language, her mannerisms, her actions, her reasoning, and mentality. The spirits of prevention and withholding were in her arms, her hands, her mouth, her speech, her words, her conduct, and behavior. Next, we dealt with a strong man, right? So in the Bible, it says that strongholds need to be broken and the strong man has to be bound and his goods plundered in the name above any other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the only name that can break a mental demonic stronghold. Strongholds are built up over a lifetime. Strongholds are like mental conditioning. Strongholds are established because of demonic brainwashing through the people in your immediate vicinity. Your parents, your caretakers, your teachers, your coaches, your guidance counselor, the ones that spoke death over you and insults and criticism and demeaned you and degraded you and berated you and belittled you. And so you started to develop thoughts and mentalities and behaviors and beliefs 
based on all of those experiences so there's a strong man that's operating from the heavenly realms and he's got all these lower ranking spirits influencing you and he directs them the strong man will direct each spirit to manifest at different times in your life to keep you in a perpetual cycle and state of trauma so under the stronghold of trauma and there was witchcraft associated with this was a spirit of trauma a spirit of abuse a spirit of slander criticism demeaning degrading insults mockery berating berating was also a spirit in a generational curse a spirit of threats insulting rage animosity violence wrath rebellion belittling sadness terror panic Sadness and panic were generational curses and spirits. Anxiety was a generational curse and a spirit. Fear was a generational curse and a spirit. The Bible says God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So anything that's the opposite of faith is a spirit of fear. Worry, anxiety, restlessness, panic, terror insomnia phobias that kind of thing fear was a spirit and a generational curse nervousness a spirit and a generational curse restlessness spirit and a generational curse insomnia a spirit and a generation generational curse generational curse means that kind of stuff runs in your bloodline you'll notice a pattern Self-criticism was a spirit. Self-hatred was a spirit. Self-loathing was a spirit. Disgust was a spirit. Humiliation was a spirit. Embarrassment was a spirit. And shame was a spirit. Whatever their name is, that's their assignment. That's their function. It's to cause shame, embarrassment, humiliation, disgust, self-loathing. Not just for you, other people. A spirit of entitlement. I want to do it. I feel like it, so I'm going to, regardless of what the Bible says, regardless of what God says. That's what entitlement is. Escapism and offense. That stronghold was broken in the name above any other, in the name of Jesus. Not the name of Confucius, not the name of Allah, not the name of Buddha, not the name of Muhammad, definitely not the name of the universe. This demonic stronghold was broken in the name of Jesus. As these spirits started to manifest, same thing, she felt movement in her body. She felt tightening in joints and ligaments. She felt discomfort. She felt uh, not, not, I want to say pain, but she felt like something was happening to, to let her know they were not pleased. Because when they manifest, they know they're going to have to leave. Again, she was throwing up. She was vomiting. She was spitting up as these demons were leaving her. One of the things that she needed to do for this stronghold to be broken that the Lord brought to my attention is she needed to forgive herself for reacting the way that she did. And she also needed to forgive the people that abused her. Because the Bible says, and it's commanded, it's very clear, that we are to forgive 70 times 7. We don't have the capacity to forgive because Jesus Christ said, apart from me, you can't do anything. The Lord says, with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We need to remember that. I don't have the capacity to forgive things that I consider in, in, in my mind and in my flesh to be unforgivable. I need to hand them over to Jesus. And he's going to take that venom, that poison, that murder out of my heart. Once he brings it to my attention, the Holy Spirit will bring it to your attention. Hallelujah. So she needed to forgive herself and the person that abused her. That was broken. The witchcraft that was on her life was broken. Hallelujah. And after that, the Lord had uh, revealed that she's never going to react like that again. She's never going to react like that again. I also want to leave you with this. 
there was a time when I first started going to this Pentecostal church and uh, they moved out of the area, so I'm not going there anymore, but I still consider them my church family and I love each and every one of them. And I started going there at a time where I was about as broken as you could possibly be broken. So every single time they open up the altar calls, I was right there. I was the first one. No shame in my game. I'm coming up here because I am openly admitting I don't have it all together. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us know that God loves humility? A broken and a contrite heart, a repentant heart, he will not despise. So there was one day in particular, and this was new, but I would start to tremble at the word of God. I would actually start to tremble during the services. And at first it was a little unnerving. I was like, what is this? What is this? It made me uncomfortable. But I just, I just didn't realize that the spirit of God lives on the inside of me. And, and when you get filled up with more of the Spirit, when the, the Spirit of God truly it just comes upon you, and you can feel His presence so strong that that is overwhelming. And sometimes our human bodies can't, can't contain it, can't, can't handle it almost. So I was trembling hearing the word. And um, I remember that afterwards... Shortly afterwards, um, the pastor's wife had come over to me and said something along the lines of, when it breaks off of you, it will break off of them. And now, now I know what that means. And now I know that that means when a generational curse is broken off of a child of God, it breaks off of the entire bloodline. It breaks off of the entire bloodline. No matter what that stronghold was. Trauma. Rage. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's amazing. There's nothing that he cannot do. I need you to understand that. Um, I know that some people feel some kind of, some kind of way about deliverance, right? They're saying, oh, a, a Christian... A Christian can't be influenced by demons. Oh, yes, they can. When you spend three quarters of your life filling up your temple, your house, so to speak, with junk, it takes a while to clear that out. And God will not deliver a person overnight, especially if you're on milk and not solid food, and you're just in the beginning of your walk, and you're not rooted and grounded in the word, and your soil, the depth of your soil, it doesn't run deep enough for him to deliver you overnight because the beasts of the field would accumulate, meaning if Satan lost all that dominion that he had over you and all that territory that took decades to establish, and then God just delivered you overnight, but you weren't. You weren't standing on the solid rock. You didn't have an active prayer life. You didn't know the word. You didn't know how to put your armor on. You knew nothing about spiritual warfare. What kind of grace would that be? Satan would come at you hard. And you wouldn't be able to withstand that attack. Because it takes a while in this walk. To be able. To walk in the authority that we've been given and understand what it truly means that we've been given authority. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are just sojourners on the earth passing through. We're citizens of heaven. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. There is power in the name of Jesus. Remember that power is not yours. Okay, our righteousness is filthy rags. The Christian that does all the, all the good works out there in the world. Okay, our, our righteousness is filthy rags. It is only the righteousness of God that was imputed to us that makes us good. It makes us good. Anything good that we have in us comes from God. Anything good that we have in us comes because of the finished work of the cross. And what Jesus Christ did for us. God in the flesh. The second person of the Godhead. Fully God and fully man. 
the invisible God made visible who walked among us. It's because of what he did, not because of what we can do. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Get out there. If it's, I don't know where you're at or what kind of weather there is, but if it's nice, go take a walk. Talk to Jesus. Amen. I love you.